Well, as much as we hate to say it, we're still in the middle of a global pandemic. And here in the Bay Area, COVID cases and hospitalizations are back on the rise. Joining me to talk about this in ways you can take care of yourself is Dr. Peter Chin Hong, infectious disease specialist at UCSF. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us bright and early this morning. It's so great to be here in person, Stephanie. So, you know, hospitalizations, COVID cases, it seems like they're reaching some pretty high rates compared to the rest of the state. How did we get to this point here in the Bay Area? Because we were doing so well at the beginning of this. Well, Stephanie, there are several reasons I think many people think. The first is that we we're kind of victims of our own success. We weren't uh, really exposed to the virus. We were sheltering in place. We were working at home. We could afford to work at home. And now with highly transmissible variants, uh, it's not working as much. But one would say that we did it at the right time. And now with all these tools, uh, we can probably engage in life knowing how to protect ourselves. I think the second reason is people think we're doing more testing compared to other parts of the state. Mm. That's probably less of an important reason to me. The third is that there are a lot of people from other areas coming to the area, so we're no longer Bay Area risk. We're Massachusetts risk and New York risk and the world's risk because they're all coming here to visit. And then fourthly, I think that um, you know we're going out with enthusiasm like the rest of the world um, and not different from anyone else. You know, one of the best ways that we've heard from medical experts like yourself to that we can protect ourselves is getting our booster shots, right? So we know that the um, boosters for kids between the ages of 5 to 11 was just approved. They became available in the Bay Area this weekend. Now, is this something that parents should be rushing out to get their kids? Yeah, frankly, if I had a 5 to 11 year old, I would go out and get that as soon as possible. And the reason is that that's how the vaccine works best. You give it a one-two punch and then you wait a few months and remind the immune system. I think that also because the kids 5 to 11 vaccines, one-third the adult dose, I think if anybody needs it, it's them. And also we need to build a wall of immunity. So even though kids, not, as, not like adults, don't have as much serious disease, mm -hmm. we still have to immunize them so that it protects the household. Mm -hmm. What's the reassurance for parents who might be a little apprehensive about the safety of this? Well, the safety profile is fantastic. Uh, again, it's a lower dose. That's the same dose for the booster shot. And there are no my my myocarditis cases or heart inflammation because it tracks with late puberty. So uh, older teens, younger adult males. Mm -hmm. and. The CDC also just um, recommended that seniors get their next booster. Uh, what is the message for folks of the older generation who might be a little bit hesitant about this? Well, I think, first of all, Stephanie, it's really important for everyone to get their first booster shot. I think the debate is being lost with booster in general. But make no mistake about it, that first booster shot prevents deaths, and we have that recent data during Omicron. The second booster shot, I think, given the current wave in the country, uh, the feds are uh, recommending that for those over 50 and those over 12 who are immune compromised. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, what, should, what, what kind of conversation should, say, I be having with my, my parents who are in their 60s about getting this booster? Well, I think we have a new variant. Uh, this is a new time. It's completely safe. Uh, there's no risk of immune exhaustion or more side effects. And particularly for seniors, it not just prevents infection, it protects lives. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit, too, about this new antiviral pill treatment, Paxlovid. What's the safety around that, and is that a recommended form of treatment? Um, can anyone take it? Yeah, so first of all, Paxlovid is really a game changer. It's a pill, it's readily available. Just yes, last night I prescribed it to someone. Uh, you take it within the first three to five days, you prevent hospitalization by as much as 89%. It's pretty much for most people uh, when you look at the criterion, but time is money. You need to get the diagnosis, you need to get that prescription early enough. And you know, with Paxlovid, we can have uh, very, very few deaths in the United States if everyone uses it appropriately. I remember when I was first covering Paxlovid, when it was first uh, being tried out in different hospitals, they were specifically looking to use it on patients with more severe cases of COVID. Can someone with a milder case of COVID ask their doctor for a prescription for this? Yes, definitely. That's the myth of Paxlovid. Unlike the other treatments and early treatment, I think it's really democratizing treatment and more people are eligible for it than they believe. So I think 
People should have a Paxlovid plan. They should talk to their primary care physicians before they get infected. They should check their drug interactions. All right, and we still have some time here, so I'd like to ask you about monkeypox. All right, this is something that we're starting to hear a lot more about in the news. Uh, I believe there was at least one case detected in the U.S. on the East Coast. You know, walk us through how concerned you are about this. I'm curious about monkeypox, but not very concerned. But it's a very different situation that hasn't been seen with monkeypox virus before meaning that it's simultaneously affecting people in multiple countries uh, without having been exposed to places where it comes from, which is Central and East and West Africa. What sort of symptoms come with monkeypox that people should be yeah. aware of? So it starts off looking like COVID, actually. Uh, fevers, um, muscle aches, uh, fatigue. But two weeks later, one to two weeks later, you get this unmistakable rash that starts in the trunk, moves to the extremities. It looks like a pox, so a fluid-filled blister. Oh, goodness, that does not sound pleasant at all. Um, but as far as we know, is it a deadly disease? Well, the mortality rate in this particular strain is less than 1%. And, and we haven't had any fatalities in the U.S. We had a monkeypox uh, outbreak in, in prairie dogs, and the people who took care of them back in 2003, where more than 70 people got infected because they were handling these animals that were housed with these African rats in the same place. So since then, you know, no one has really done poorly they haven't needed any antivirals or special treatment but awareness is everything because it is transmissible and this new monkeypox that we're seeing must be transmitted from human to human even though it's not usually a thing mm, so what is the big public uh, health and safety message for families here in the bay area I, yeah i think recognition is key contacting your health authorities if you notice it um, because but not panic not changing your plans if you're traveling don't worry to change it I'm definitely not panicked about it. I'm just curious. And what is the reminder that you'd like to share with folks here in the Bay Area when it comes to COVID? Well, COVID isn't going anywhere uh, way soon. I think you have to think about ABCs. Air, wear your mask. B, booster shots, definitely important as we said. C, think about immunizing your kids. And D, using those diagnostic tests when you have them. All right, Dr. Peter Chin Hong with UCSF, thank you so much for your insight and your time. Thanks so much, Stephanie. All right, we appreciate it. We'll be right back.